Today, we're gonna make five underrated rum cocktails. These are rum cocktails that might be popular to some people, maybe even to you, but generally speaking, these are either not recognized to their fullest potential, or possibly they've been maligned by years and years of bad publicity, chain restaurants, and tacky bars. Now, there are definitely more than five underrated rum cocktails. So for the time being, let's just call this one right now, volume one. Rum cocktails and just rum in general are grossly underrated, but you know that, that's why you're here. That's why you clicked on this video. You're one of the cool ones. So the first cocktail we're going to get to is the El Presidente or the Presidente cocktail. We're beginning with this classic Cuban cocktail that was at one point in time very popular, but fell on some hard times and had some translation issues with its ingredients. It's been resurrected as of late, like the last decade or two, but it still deserves more love. We're following the tropical standard recipe and it calls for Camo's Blanc Vermouth de Chambray. And a Blanc Vermouth is the most important aspect here. We're not looking for a dry vermouth. And if you wanna know more about the Presidente cocktail, I did an entire video on it, which you can find right up here, and I will include in this episode's description as well. Start with five drops of a saline solution, two dashes of orange bitters, half a teaspoon of grenadine, one teaspoon of a dry curacao, half an ounce of scarlet ibis rum, and then one ounce of Hamilton White Stash. And finally, one and a half ounces of Camo's Blanc Vermouth de Chambray. And there you go, the Presidente cocktail. Cheers. What I appreciate the most about this drink is its connection to the past and historic martini style cocktails that you, Manhattans as well, that use a heavy amount of vermouth. And this is first and foremost a vermouth cocktail. The Camoes is the main thing you can taste here, but you're getting some sweetness there from the curacao, from the grenadine. Some of the orange bitters come through and then you can't taste the rum, but too much in the modern era have we, I think, moved away from making uh, martinis or, or drinks that have, stirred drinks that have vermouth and, and putting way too much spirit in there. That can be delicious too, but historically, you know, those were often half vermouth. And in this case, having that bottle of Camo's like shine through the drink is I think what makes this version of the Presidente or El Presidente special. Moving on to the most underappreciated cocktail of all time, it's the Planter's Punch. It's the key, the foundation to most excellent drinks and has its own jingle, one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, and four of weak. Now, not that useful of a song all of the time since the sweet is, is two parts, there, so it's a little bit too much sugar, and we kill a drink. And then there's the four of weak, which we know is water and or ice. This is a great drink to explore rums, and there is no exact rules or recipe, but here is how I make a planter's punch. I'm gonna start with three dashes of Angostura bitters, one ounce of lime juice, three quarter ounces of a two to one simple syrup, and then three ounces of rum, and I'm using a Jamaican rum. Planter's Punch. This has definitely become a go-to for me when I don't know what I wanna have. I, the Planter's Punch is easy. There's lots of ice. It's strong, so it holds up to the crushed ice and the dilution that comes with that. And like I said, it is a great way to explore rum. So let's try it. Jamaican rum, Angostura bitters, some tartness and flavor from the lime juice. I think that this might be the most 
perfect cocktail, to be honest. And not this exact one, but just any of them. Use whatever rum you like. Uh, this is uh, Appleton Signature, a more affordable rum, and yet still delicious. Sometimes it's the simple things in life that are the best, and that's the planner's punch. When it comes to underrated rum drinks, let's talk about underrated tiki cocktails. The Jet Pilot comes from Steve Crane's Luau Restaurants and is their take on Don the Beachcomber's Test Pilot. Now, both of these are similar and seemingly pared down versions of a zombie. It is a drink that's virtually unknown by the mainstream and really only loved by the diehard tiki and tropical drink fans. I'm gonna start with six drops of Pernod, one dash of Angostura bitters, half an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of grapefruit juice, half an ounce of cinnamon syrup, half an ounce of falernum, three quarter ounces of a gold Puerto Rican rum, one ounce of a dark Jamaican rum, and three quarter ounces of a 151 Demerara rum. the jet pilot from Steve Crane. So the drink is not Don the Beachcomber, but it is Don the Beachcomber. It is all of the flavors synonymous with Don the Beachcomber. You get rum flavor, but you get perno, kind of giving that menthol-y, minty, uh, sort of herbaceousness, like just a little bit of it there in the perno. And then you're also getting some bitters, you're getting some bitterness from the grapefruit juice. And all through with, with the cinnamon syrup, everything is balanced out. Everything works together. And that is the greatest contribution I think you could give to Don the Beachcomber drinks is it's not just a collection of a bunch of ingredients, whether it's five or 10 or 15 shoved together. They work. They always work. So this is the Steve Crane Luau cocktail, but it's based on the Don the Beachcomber uh, test pilot. Uh, and it is. Delicious. If you want an introduction into like what a real, like balanced out, elaborate tiki cocktail is, then this is going to be the one to start with. And similar to a zombie, but a little bit different, a little bit more palatable, a little easier to drink, and something you can have more than one of. Now we get to the Hurricane. And the Hurricane is one of these underrated cocktails because it can be so much better than what you are used to. The hurricane existed before it found its way to New Orleans and of course, Pat O'Brien's bar. It's often assumed to be a tiki cocktail because it has rum and it has fruit juices, but most tiki fans, probably most of you that are into tiki know that this is not tiki, except it is tiki because it has roots to an exotic cocktail bar, tiki bar from the 1930s. And the first reference to the hurricane that we're making today was comparing it to a zombie. So when we look back on it, it truly is a tiki cocktail. And if made properly, it's delicious. And today's recipe is from the Ron Rico guide from the early 1940s, maybe even 1939. And I will be having this recipe since I'm drinking so many other cocktails today. Start with half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of lime juice, one ounce of the passion fruit syrup, and then we need some rum, and I'm using this dark rum blend. This is my dark rum infinity bottle. If you didn't catch that, I made a whole video on all the different dark rum. I took almost all of the extras and made my own infinity bottle. So two ounces of that dark rum. We'll distress our umbrella here. Looks cute. Nothing cuter than death and destruction. And that's it, the hurricane. All right, folks, we're doing it. We're bringing the hurricane back. The hurricane is now cool again. So let's try this one. It is unmistakable because of its uh, borderline bracing tartness. We get tartness from your lemon, from your lime, from your patch fruit syrup, sweetness from the patch fruit syrup and rum. It is simple, it is basic, it is delicious. It is not overly processed with different colors and, and, and weird syrups. It's, it's simple. It's passion fruit syrup, lime juice, lemon juice, and rum. 
And a shout out to Jim Hurricane Hayward because I uh, I asked him about some underrated rum cocktails and he came back with this as one of them. And I totally kind of put this out of my mind, even though I'm hugely into the hurricane, I've done multiple hurricane videos, but uh, I hadn't thought about it from the lens of uh, it being underrated, which it is. It is underrated. It deserves more love. Calling a daiquiri underrated is conflicting because it has had its resurgence over the last 10 to 20 years and is well respected by most in the cocktail community, but not really the mainstream. You can walk into most bars today, and if you order an old fashioned or even a Manhattan, chances are pretty good that you'll get something resembling what that drink should be. But a daiquiri is kind of, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't order it from most places. There are so many ways to make a daiquiri, but really you wanna be thinking about it in parts two parts rum, one part lime, and some part sugar. And I say some part because you're either using a simple syrup, which is two to one, a one to one. Maybe you're using granulated sugar. Maybe you're one of the really cool people out there that makes their own powdered sugar just for daiquiris. Sounds pretty awesome of you. Now use whatever rum you like, but I prefer the lighter style, kind of crisper, cleaner rums in my traditional daiquiri. So I'm gonna get started here with one and a half teaspoons of powdered, homemade powdered bar sugar, one ounce of lime juice, and two ounces of rum. The simple and humble daiquiri. Cheers. It's simple, it's refined, it's rummy, it's limey, but mainly it is of the rum. So the rum you use is going to come through. If you're using really cheap rum that's harsh and bitter, you'll taste that. If you're using something better, you'll taste that. And it is the ultimate cocktail to explore rums with. If you're not making daiquiris like this, and you don't have to use powdered sugar, you could use granulated sugar. You use simple syrup, but I'm talking about just the simplicity of it, finding out the ratio of ice, finding out if you like a full ounce of lime or maybe you like three quarters, finding out how much sugar you like. That's the key to a great daiquiri. It's not necessarily making it how I make it or a book or your favorite bartender. It's finding out how you like it, the sweetness levels, the acidity levels, and the rum that you like. That's what goes into making a perfect daiquiri. Well, it doesn't get any better than this. Five underrated, underappreciated, not loved enough rum cocktails. All of these are delicious. Make any of these and you will have yourself a delicious cocktail. So that's it for this one. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, what are you doing? Just subscribe here. If not, just give the video a like below at least. If you have an idea for what you think is an underrated rum cocktail, and I'm talking about cocktails that people know about, not some obscure thing that you've seen somewhere, but like cocktails that are known, maybe they have a, a recent or even a, a, a long ago historical context to them and people should be respecting them more. Let me know that in the comments below. Otherwise, check out my Patreon page if you wanna support this channel more and I will see you on the next one.